In talking about how the industry can rob and truth is lost and everybody chases dollars, we've lost a lot of great talent to that. And mental health now mm. is a big issue in our community, but ever since the PTSD or post-traumatic slave disorder, slavery and uh, slavery has affected the minds of um, our people through ways in which the music is an expression. And one of my favorite singers of all time, rest in peace to Phyllis Hyman, she took herself and she was there. I'm a Phyllis Hyman fan. Okay. Did we talk about Phyllis Hyman before? No. Nope. I love Phyllis Hyman. And what opened me up to Phyllis Hyman is not only her music, it was also her story. And Ninth Wonder, one of my favorite hip hop producers, sampled her in one of his albums. And I think that's one of his top beats ever because her voice reverberates in a three section tone. It is spiritual, it is physical, and it's emotional. And some singers don't have that. When the soul is taken from the music, you're just listening to dead weight. As a singer, you said it's a slap in the face for you to project and people don't get it. What is it like for you to sing to a zombie and not to be felt through your song? It is... Um... I feel sad for them. It's not, it can be frustrating for me because I'm like, yo, wake up. But I feel sad for them because it says something about who they are, not anything about me. You know what I mean? Um, it says something about, it says something about what's going on inside of them. You know what I mean? I feel bad for them. I want, I, I, I cry for them, you know? But I have to talk about what you mm -hmm. just said about Phyllis Hyman. Talk to me. Because I wanted to go back there because okay. it's, a, it's a certain reason why I brought that up. Oh, okay. I was supposed to play Phyllis Hyman in her movie. And um, the movie was, was scrapped because, um, you know, there was some issues with Phyllis Hyman's family and everything like that. And, you know, we didn't want to be like you know, those people who bogart the story, we gonna do it anyway. Like the they Lifetime, Whitney Houston stuff. We didn't wanna do that. Gotcha. You know what I mean? We want their blessing. But um when I was up for the part and they when they when they hired me for the part. Because you know, Phyllis was six, like six foot on flat feet. I'm six two in hills, I'm five eleven. And um my voice has been compared to Phyllis Hyman for years. Years. And um, I love her. I got her book right there. It's, it's up there somewhere. Funny how God work in it. Yep. It's up there somewhere. That that was, you know, I read it as I was preparing for the role and watched everything. And, and um, we went to go meet one of her musicians because her musicians love her. They protect her, you know, her memory. And they were like, what? Who going to be playing her? Who is this? So we went over to Harlem and we met one of them. And um, yeah, he was looking at me suspect. And when I stood up, he saw how tall I was. He was like, all right, maybe, you know. I sang for him, he said, all right. But then when I told him as I was researching her, uh, my degree is in psychology, so she's fascinating to me. I said, I think she was undiagnosed by COVID. His eyes popped open, he was like, I always felt that she was, you know what I mean? And because reading her story and watching her videos, I seen the symptoms. Of it. But it, as I was studying for her, I was becoming so immersed in her that it got scary. That 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 spirit came upon me, and I started to feel that darkness that she felt. I had to get out of that. Because she, she always felt like she was chasing something. Like she, she wanted to be loved. She never realized how loved she was. And that's, that's interesting that you brought up for the time. Well, like I said, I, I did research to study and get ready for you. 
and you reminded me when I'm I, I can't tell you the names of her songs and all that because I'm not that type of person who loves music. I don't memorize stuff. That's not me. I go not only into the feel, but also into what's projected into me. Like people, sometimes you see colors when they hear music and all that. I ain't me. I just go to different places mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and going back to mental health and how music can heal the soul. For example, since you, you talked about God and the Bible a little bit, when Saul wanted to kill David and David played songs on the harp to ease his soul, even, you know, music can be good. good music can cause rage. Saul has killed his thousands, David has tens of thousands. It, and even that. It's a great responsibility. It is. and you can, It can be used for evil and good. And with the gift that you have, as powerful you are from your diaphragm to your nose and your breathing and how punctual and pronounced you are with your words, I find it very, I find it a crime that people on the radio can sing but not have songs in their heart. So when I say sing to a zombie, you're giving them empty words and they're giving you an empty look right back. Anybody can dance to a rhythm, but everybody can't love the wordplay of a song and that's what I fear when it comes to you because you are so talented that I fear that the gift that you are given in the climate that we live in now is going to be sensational yet underappreciated because I feel so many people will rather ride the wave than grow and mature and it will come in their due time but it is, it is, it is a plate fit ready for the world who is starving that someone's going to hide from them and that's what made me sad about this, but joyful and being able to do it because we're gonna we're gonna make sure whoever's blocking the plate, we get them out the way. But that was my fear for myself for many years, you know. Um, but I know now that um, that way me is gonna be different. And I'm telling you. It, I did not always feel this way. I'm just beginning to feel this way. I'm just beginning to believe this thing. You know, it was prophesied over me many years ago that um, with me, God was going to break protocol. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. But when I tell you that God has broken protocol, He has. Um, everything that's happening with me it's just not supposed to be if you look at it in you know rationally you know like how am I at the prime of my life in the middle of my life you know this was supposed to happen 20 years ago this was some you know what I mean um, how am I able to walk into a venue and be accepted in a place where I'm not supposed to be accepted you know what I mean? And it didn't happen, this is happening now. Five years ago, I couldn't say this. You know what I mean? Fifteen years ago, I couldn't say this. So, I know, like those fears, are, don't, they don't, they're not, they don't exist to me right now because I'm just, uh, God's continuously blowing my mind. Because, you know, it's like, but that, I'm, a, I'm, I'm writing love songs. Like, I got <laughs> hardcore gangsters. Like, I love Gail Campbell. I love that song, Don't Know Love. My brother Chops, you know, Chops the Savior, my brother. He came to me and he was like, Sis, my brother, like, you, you like, hardcore gangster dude, like, he loved Don't Know Love, girl. That's the name of one of my songs. He loved Don't Know Love. See, it's not, it does stuff that's happening and stuff, that, that's how I know God is all in it, because it don't make no sense. So, Karaj, don't be scared. Don't be sad for me. I'm telling you, I'm going to be appreciated more than you think. I believe that, too. <laughs> I believe that, too.